Hello, everybody. This is Manoj Varman. And uh, as I mentioned, I have decided to record this video for a reason. A few days back, there was a question from Sujan in the group about the significance of in-situ stresses uh, in, case, uh, uh, in case the method of excavation chosen for a tunnel is hard rock gripper TBM. So the answer to this was provided in very, very easy terms by Anand Dwarkanath recently. Uh, that uh, yes, you have to consider in situ stresses. In fact, uh, I would add to that, that uh, why only for a tunnel for which uh, you are going to use the gripper TBM, for any tunnel, you have to consider the in situ stresses. In situ stresses can play an important role depending on the situation. And uh, when you talk about, but I, I think Sujan is perhaps trying to talk about high stresses. And later on in his reply, Anand Dwarkanath mentioned about squeezing down condition. So, so let me take a step back and try to uh, try to explain these things, and then I'll 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 provide. So, so, so uh, as I mentioned, instead of writing these comments in a long post, I thought it'll be easier to record and give my comments through a video. So, as I said, let me take take a step back and try to explain some of these things. You see, when you talk about the presence of in-situ stresses, I think we are concerned here about the presence of high in-situ stresses for tunneling. The specific question is tunneling with gripper machine, but I'll, I'll sort of elaborate it and then come back to the question. Um, when you talk about high stresses, particularly in mountainous conditions, in the extreme cases, you can have two extreme conditions. One is rock burst condition, Another extreme is squeezing down condition. In fact, Anand mentioned about squeezing down condition. You see, if you take something which is very stiff like this, stiff, where you put stress, try to break it, you will hardly see any deformation taking place. If I put it, put stress, you will hardly see any deformation. But after a while, if I go on putting that force, it will break. It will break violently. Okay, this is called a brittle failure, which happens in stiff material. Right. Instead of this, if I take a piece of rubber, rubber, which is soft, kind of ductile, if I apply the same kind of pressure, you will see a lot of deformation. In the earlier case, you didn't see any deformation. And after a huge amount of deformation, perhaps the rubber will break. This is more plastic, more ductile behavior. This is brittle. Now, in tunneling, when the stresses surrounding the tunnel periphery exceed the strength of rock, and if the rock strength is good, brittle material, then the stresses have to be really high for the rock to fail. Any failure in tunnels under high stress, in rock masses which are very strong, would be a brittle failure. The extreme case of a brittle failure is rock burst. In rock burst condition, when the rock mass fails, it fails in a violent manner, bursting. And so the rock can fly and hit and can kill people. Okay. Uh, in the case of high stresses in poor ground condition. See, so far we are talking about high stresses in good ground condition, hard rock, high compressive strength, in which you have the brittle failure. But when you talk about soft ground condition, relatively poor rock condition, under high stress, then remember the case of rubber? Instead of a brittle failure, you would expect a ductile behavior, a plastic behavior, which means excessive convergence of the tunnel, which is called the squeezing down condition. A lot of convergence takes place. In the case of a brittle metal, you'd hardly see any deformation. A lot of convergence takes place. That is the squeezing down condition. So in nutshell, under high stress over a tunnel or around the tunnel, in good competent rock, you might expect rock burst condition in the extreme case. In the case of high stresses in a tunnel which is surrounded, which is in relatively poor ground condition, instead of a rock burst, in the extreme case, you would expect a squeezing down condition. Now, coming back to the use of TBMs for these conditions, there have been many instances in the world where TBMs have been used in both conditions. Now, Sujan's question was concerning the use of a gripper TBM, right? In grip, and, and later on, Anand mentioned that in squeezing down condition, it is better to use a gripper TBM than a shielded TBM. I'll try to explain. In 
good rock, that's what Susan was, was mentioning about, in good rock condition, good, hard, competent rock, a stress-related failure would likely to be towards the rock burst condition, spalling, cracking, rock burst, that kind of brittle failure. Right. Now, in those conditions, it is better to use a gripper machine, which is what he mentioned, because in a gripper machine, you don't have a shield, right? So which means you have space available, you have the provision for providing different securing arrangements. That's how you secure an area which is under rock burst condition. You have to put a lot of support. In fact, one of the TBM manufacturers, uh, Robbins calls it McNally support, but heavily support, heavily secured areas. I'm not going to go into details of those, but then you have the freedom to do that. Right. Uh, if you are using a gripper machine for a squeezing ground condition, there is a, there's a contradiction here. And what Anand Dwarkanath mentions actually highlights that contradiction or, or, the, or the debate which is going on in the tunneling industry. The thing is, for using a gripper machine, gripper has these gripper machines, the gripper pads on either sides, and machine moves forward, taking reaction from the sides of the tunnel. Like suppose these are the grippers, takes the reaction, moves forward, takes the reaction, which means to take the reaction, you must have competent good rock. But we are talking squeezing. Where would you have squeezing? Not in good competent rock. In good competent rock, under high stresses, the chances are of rock bursting rather than squeezing. So if you're talking about squeezing, which means you're talking of poor ground condition, that poor ground may not give you enough reaction. So there is a issue about using effective use of gripper TBMs, right? So this debate go, goes on. Many people say that, okay, uh, in, instead of gripper machine, you use a shielded machine, a single shield machine or double shield machine uh, in which when squeezing takes place, you have every chance of TB, you know, shield getting jammed. That's why you, you should use gripper machine. But in gripper machine, how do you get the reaction? And then TBM manufacturers to look for alternatives. And there have been projects in which people have said, okay, a TBM getting jammed is a bigger problem than doing something to, for example, providing bigger uh, pads or distributing the to, to get the to get the reaction. So those things go on at the, at the same times. But uh, you see, I'll give you a, a very interesting example. A few years back, India completed Kishan Ganga project, very close to line of control with the Pakistan LOC. And I worked in that area. And Kishan Ganga project, I think 14 plus kilometer long tunnel. And uh, this was constructed a few years back, completed a couple of years back. This is on Kishan Ganga River, hydroelectric project. Now it was anticipated that there would be squeezing in this tunnel because there were certain areas of the tunnel, which were passing under high overburden. High overburden means high stress. And the, the compressive strength of the, of the rock, which are sandstone, sillstones, and mudstone, was I think ranging from, uh, um, I think 30 to 80 MPA in that range. So the lower uh, uh, ranges of the strength would perhaps squeeze particularly under high stresses. And one of the uh, world expert in the squeezing ground condition, who is no more, unfortunately, Professor Giovanni Barla was roped in by Halcro, who were the designers for that. And uh, so, so he started to work on the concept of squeezing in this condition. And in fact, the machine chosen for those conditions was suitable for squeezing ground condition, a shielded machine, but I'll, I'll come back and tell you what arrangements they made. Now, interestingly, downstream of the same river, Kishan Ganga flows into the Pakistan side, and uh, another river which flows from India towards Pakistan is Jhelum. So this Kishan Ganga River, it enters Pakistan and it's called Neelam. Jhelum comes and Neelam. So there's a confluence of ne Neelam Jhelum, which is where Pakistan has, I think, recently completed or about to be completed, Neelam Jhelum project, hydroelectric project, downstream of Kishan Ganga. Right. And so uh, again, similar geology, sandstone, mudstone, siltstone here. And initially they were going by drill blast and somebody said the progress is so slow of Kishan, uh, Neelam Jhelum project that it would take 75 years to complete. <laughs> but then, then they chose uh, two herring tank machine, I think, and they worked successfully. The interesting thing is on this side, we were anticipating squeezing down condition. On the other side, in similar geology, slightly higher overburden, they uh, faced rock burst conditions, not squeezing ground condition. 
See, both stress related, similar geology, the, uh, similar kind of thing. We ex expected squeezing. Fortunately, there was no squeezing and project went through. That tunnel was completed. D downstream on the Neelam Jaina project, there were several rock burst instances. In fact, the two Harrington machines we, they were used there. One of them got, got badly affected by the rock burst and actually it was immobilized for a few months, I think about eight, nine months it would work uh, because it was affected by the rock burst condition, violent uh, rock burst conditions. So these are the areas which, uh, in, in fact, another project which is very famous and very well documented is the Gotted Base Tunnel, 57 kilometer long railway tunnel in, in Swiss Alps. Again, uh, hard rock tribunes were used, I think again from Herring Net uh, successfully. And there were several uh, instances of rock burst conditions there also. So, to answer Susan's questions, yes, I could have answered in one word. Yes, you need to consider institute stress, forget about gripper TBM, any TBM, forget about TBM, any method of external ex excavation, you, you need to consider institute stress. Unfortunately, in many projects, institute stress measurement is not given the importance it deserves, and many projects have suffered because of that. So, so the purpose behind uh, uh, raking up so many issues, actually, uh, is that uh, all of us who are working in the field of tunneling, particularly the youngsters or people who are younger than me in this group, you're very fortunate that you work in a field which is very exciting, which still has many, many questions for which there's no fixed answer. It is so project specific. And therefore the field of tunneling is so exciting and so challenging. So if you get opportunity to work in tunnel project, you consider yourself very lucky and the way tunneling projects are increasing in the country, the future is very bright. So I, I thought I'll, I'll raise some of the issues. One thing before I sign off is that Anand mentioned about uh, a paper by Trevor Carter. The paper he was referring to draws heavily from an earlier paper, which I co-authored with uh, Trevor Carter. And I'd like to uh, show you that paper. It is here. You can see, I think, TBM versus drill blast, a difficult choice in mountain terrain. And there's lights M11, my name, and TG Carter. Uh, so so uh, I, I can share this paper with anybody who's interested. Please let me know. And in case you are interested to know more about these issues, which I, I tried to sort of highlight, um, uh, I would be happy to do it. The only thing is that, like all of you, uh, time is always a constraint, but I'll, I'll try to find time whenever I can. If there is any question, I would love to answer. So thank you very much. I hope you don't mind me sending this video instead of writing a long post. Bye-bye.